Hey yo, what's up dorks? Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to show some of you dorks how to play Call of Duty Cold War Zombies map, Die Machine. For some beginners and those returning back from the old school zombies may have trouble at first. Some mechanics of the game have changed, but a lot is for the better. This new version of zombies is a blast to play and is a fresh of breath air. However, changing some mechanics may leave older players behind, but today I will show you how to get good so they say. Prior to even dropping off, the game lets you create a class. If you've already been playing the multiplayer, you will have a lot of things unlocked by now, and you can take advantage of the class system to grab an awesome weapon to start off with. However, if this is your first time playing, choosing one of the default weapons isn't that bad since I truly believe it's not about the weapon, it's about the player. Multiplayer on the other hand, is about the meta, not the player. Anyways. If you can choose a weapon, I recommend starting off with perhaps a shotgun like the SPA-12 or if you're on PC and are good with headshots, the Type 63 or the M14 DMR. And for your skill, I recommend choosing Aether Shroud, but Ring of Fire is a blast and does help on higher rounds. Aether Shroud lets you skedaddle last minute to the Shadow Realm in order to fend off being downed and needing to be revived because of your ray gun. However, if you're already a great player and can train well, I would recommend Ring of Fire for bringing down the meta tons. More on that later. Now that you're ready to go, time for us to drop off. Now, if you're going with randos, you're gonna have a bad time. Most rage quit before round 10, and most teammates are more helpful as cannon fodder. So I highly recommend learning the ropes in single player or teaming up with your friends. Anyways, I don't know who I am, I don't know where I am, but all I know is I must kill. You see that zombie over there? Now you don't. That's the whole point of zombies. You are put in a confined map and are told to survive for the unforeseeable future. Granted, describing the game like that is very dull and boring. However, there are tools and equipment you can use to your advantage for reaching such high rounds and that is my job to help you. Once you complete step one, which is to kill a zombie, you may have noticed your points meter went up. Every zombie kill is 90 points and every headshot is 115 points. Very cheeky Treyarch. I recommend if you want to, you should stab some zombies while at the first 4-5 to five stages as every knife kill is 115 points and the zombies will take be one shot with a knife. If you can, only use the butt end of your weapon, it may take longer, so I recommend upgrading to a knife later. One thing most of you zombie veterans have noticed is that you are no longer awarded points for every shot you take at a zombie. No matter how many times you shoot a zombie, you can only get 90 to 115 points. That's it. Oh, hey, what did that little fella shit out right there? That green looking thing. And that blue looking thing as well. Well, those are scraps. A new mechanic that Cold War has implemented, where you can craft items such as grenades, tomahawks, monkey bombs, and chopper gunners. But you're gonna wanna save those items up for your weapon and vest. More on that later. Keep that in the back of your mind and save up as much as you can. Anyways, I recommend buying this door and the one on top as soon as you have about 2500 points. I would not recommend sticking around too long because the power isn't on and it's very very spooky. A zombie might tickle your butthole or something down there. The plane area is a great place to train and now I'm going to stop myself there because a good chunk of people do not know what a train is so I'm going to help those out in the back. Back in Call of Duty World at War. Scientists were coming up with a solution to last longer in zombies. At the time, some strategies were used as the camping method, where many talented players would camp in the corner of a map and fire upon the undead with weapons of mass destruction, such as ray guns, machine guns, and much more. However, over time, the higher the round, the harder it was to kill a zombie. Eventually, the team would get their ass ate and the game would end in around round 30 to 60. Good start, however, there was another way. A man named Ali A discovered a new strategy, one that involved you constantly running around a circle, baiting the zombies and prolonging the inevitable. The zombies eating your ass. It was a great strat, brilliant actually. People now using the training method were able to last hundreds if not thousands of rounds in zombies. It's genius really. Now, here we are in the present. How do we survive long games of zombies? 
Well, the answer to that is training. That's right, kids. Now, this plain area is a great little place with open areas and enough room to train. However, training itself may take some time to practice. It isn't something you can learn overnight. The easiest way to create a train will be to run around in a circle and lot, not let any zombies hit you. If you notice carefully, a zombie is only as fast as you are. Granted, there are a few runners, but most zombies are as fast as your walking speed. That means you do not have to run 24-7 and can walk a lot of the time. However, when they catch up to you, it is wise of you to book it the fuck out of there. Once the train is of reasonable size, you may commence Order 66 and turn around and shoot the zombies. However, while you do this, please be mindful of your surroundings and do not get backed up into a wall. Memorize the surrounding area, think of it like a football game. Mom and dad are there on the sidelines and you're about to make them disappointed again. Anyways, map out all the hurdles in the game, avoid those areas, mark all the zombie spawns, make a mental note. Zombies enter from here, here, here. Avoid the back area as much as possible. Avoid the cave entrance because zombies come out from there. Shoot here in the clear area and make a loop-de-loop -loop and pull. And your shoes are looking good. Now that you've graduated my mini college course on how to train, I want my five grand delivered to me at this address in order to receive your diploma. Anyways, once you get used to training, Save up about 7 grand in points and you are now ready to turn on the power. Before you do so, I recommend if you're not a great player and may need some extra help, get Juggernaut since it is available to you without turning on the power so you may buy it. And stamina up as well. However, if you think you can survive another 2 rounds without Jug, you can actually get it for free by doing the easter egg after getting the park for the pack a punch. More on that later. If you're one of the unlucky ones, you may have found a mystery box, however, I highly recommend not buying a weapon from the box. If your intentions is to get a wonder weapon straight away, you're in for a bad time. As for my luck, I got the ray gun after 48 hours of playing zombies. Granted, I was leveling up my weapons most of the time, but you still would be let down. Especially since the zombies require a lot of points that you should not lose to the box. If your intentions is to get another weapon, I recommend not to bother. You are going to want to focus on upgrading one weapon or else you will be stuck unloading a whole mag on a level 20 zombies. I would only recommend this to someone who cannot create their own class but even then I would highly recommend just buying the SPAS 12 from the plain area. It's an SS tier weapon especially pack a punched. With 7 grand in your pocket and hopes and dreams in your knees you can now start heading over to the power. Being mindful of your surroundings. It is super dark down there and the butthole tickling continues. So buy the doors and turn on the power so you don't get your ass ate down in the underground. And no, not the underground from Undertale, just the underground. I highly recommend doing this if you have one or two zombies chasing you. Three is okay but make sure you social distance. Buy the doors I am buying on the screen and you're on one step away. Once you turn on the power and if you can't find it there's a prompt on your screen. You will need to activate two buttons. They are in the underground area and they are both prompted on your screen as well. You will notice a blue ball appear under the stairs. If you want to pack a punch later on, you will need to activate it. Doing so will teleport you to the great before and you will need to grab the pack a punch part. Where is the pack a punch part? Heck if I know. I'm so glad COD puts prompts on the screens so a retard like myself can figure out where I'm going. You will be stuck in the shadow room for about a minute or two. So that gives you enough time to smell the roses. I highly recommend while you are banished to crack open a few of those cold ones with the boys as they, dro as they drop goodies, ammo, and points. It will come in handy especially since you need 500 points to use the tunnel. Once that is done, take the appropriate tunnel and grab the part. Run back to the place where you entered and place it down on the wannabe pack-a-punch machine and you get teleported back. Now here's the sick part dudes! Hopefully you still got those two zombies sniffing your ass. So, shoot these orbs that are all located in the fusion area and it will teleport you again to the shadow realm. But this time a dead meme from 2020 will resurrect and cause a few Mike Wazowskis to grow on your back. If you close your eyes and don't listen, you may be able to avoid catching the radiation poisoning so you may not have to use a radix in order to get rid of it later on. You can avoid the dead meme altogether by leaving the room 
or doing other errands like pack-a-punching. Once the zombies stop dancing and you are teleported back, head to the box at the bottom of the stairs and wait for the smiley face to taunt Orange. To those who are unaware, Orange on a weapon symbolizes that they are on the highest tier in the game, so opening the box on the Orange can get you a chance at either the die machine, a ray gun, or a top tier weapon, although it is not always guaranteed. With the weapon, you also get a good amount of scraps for both green and blue, a grenade or something like that, and a juggernaut. Those who do not buy juggernaut have saved up 2500 towards a possible pack-a-punch or some good perks. Those who did, you may give it to your least likely to survive around 10 teammate or leave it there to die, who cares. Once you get a chance to breathe again, I highly recommend going to get your weapon upgraded. Not pack-a-punch, upgraded. And here's how. Head on over to the arsenal to bring your weapon up in tiers. I highly recommend bringing up your tiers to the max as soon as possible before working on shields or any other kind of scrapped items. This is the hardest part to explain to new players, but first tier is 500, second is 1000. Both are green. Then it moves on to the blue scraps, which is still 500 and 1000. However, get both green upgrades for weapons out the way, then the shields. And lastly, blue upgrades in the shield. This will ensure that whatever weapon you have will destroy the zombies with ease as the rounds continue. Not upgrading your weapon in tiers will result in you, in you getting your ass ate by the zombies as the round continues. As good as a player you might be and P.E.K.K.A punching weapons to the max, it will not do you well if you don't bring your weapons up in tiers. I highly recommend you tend to your weapons first. P.E.K.K.A punching also has some new improvements now. You can now P.E.K.K.A punch a weapon 3 times. However, each time is worth more than the last. First tier is 5,000, second is 15,000, and the last one is 30,000. There is no easy way to get to the top tier, however, training and grinding the points will help. You can also buy special attachments to your weapon that allow you to kill zombies faster. I highly recommend Brain Rot since it is the funniest one. However, the fire one is the best one since it stays on the zombie and kills it over time. Oh no! There is a big motherfucker now. What am I going to do? Well, prepare your appetite because you got some ass eating to do. If you've been following the steps prior to, you should be well equipped to take on the Metaton. And I know I keep saying Metaton from Undertale. It is stuck in my head. Leave me be. For those who uh, chose Ring of Fire, this will most definitely come in handy. Once activated, you create a Ring of Fire that hurts any zombies nearby and increase your damage tenfold. You also shoot from your reserve, so you don't have to reload. Shooting the Metaton while in sickle mode will cause it to die way faster. Aiming for the head is also the best way to kill it. But wait a minute, motherfuckers multiplying. I don't remember zombies multiplying. Well, unfortunately they split. But if you still have that ring of fire, shoot directly at their heads and they should die within a few seconds. It is best to do with less zombies around, but can be done in a crowd. Also, I recommend killing the Metaton first without a Ring of Fire, then killing the Splitters with the Ring of Fire. If you don't have Ring of Fire, you can use Aether Shroud to avoid the zombies and taking your time at headshots on the Metatons and the Splitters. If you have Neater, Godspeed, there is Punch and Cookies by the door. Once killed, you will have to deal with them every other round, so be prepared and have Ring of Fire ready for that. Once you kill the Metatons, you can actually start with the easter egg on the map. You don't have to do it, however the first part is the easiest and you can get a guaranteed die machine if you don't die. The Metaton should have dropped a key. Pick it up and take it to the room that has Deadshot their curry in it. Plug the key into the slot and pick up this dingy majigger. Now head to the spawn and rally up a riot. And once you got a good trail, open the door if you haven't done so already and press the button. The zombie should have gotten sucked up. Be mindful however, some will get through and you will have to make a train twice possibly. But once it is complete, discharge like I did on your mom and voila, you have the ultimate suck machine. Shoot out plasma like grenades with the right button and suck them up with the left button. It is pretty cool but does get pretty old quick. I might show you how to upgrade it in another video, but for now you should be good to go with most of the items in the game to survive up to 30 rounds or even more. Some things that come in handy are the self revives, you start with one on solo, or you can pick one up or craft one in co-op. You can save 500 scraps by picking up a vest from a zombie, and it will help with the scraps for your weapons. 
Dog rounds are a great break since they are the easiest if you don't suck big doo doo and they always drop a max ammo. Speaking of ammo, if you run out at any time, you may buy some from the boxes scattered around the map. Crafting tables are located around the map as well, so you can craft trapper gunner and such. Best place to train would be the spawn area. Since you have ammo crate there, crafting table, and it is the fastest way to get down to pack a punch and arsenal. Although, what is this thing called exfilling, and why should I not do it right away? Well, once you successfully exfil, the game ends. But is it easy to exfil? Well, yes and no. On solo, it is super easy, especially if you have monkey bombs. Chopper Gunner does help, however it has caused problems in the past where zombies won't spawn in. Although co-op, it is a tad bit harder since everyone needs to help out or you will lose. If completed successfully, you will earn a ton of XP and if done three times, you will unlock Mommy Park skin, the good one. Anyways folks, I believe that is all I know that can help you to get to higher level rounds. I highly recommend you learn the map by training at all the locations and getting a feel for it. But it is relatively small and it's not hard to learn. I may make another video regarding perks and skills and upgrading things and maybe even a strat for exfil or completing the easter egg. But that'll have to be for another day. Anyways, thanks for so much for listening you guys. And if you made it this far, press the like button if you enjoyed it. If not, dislike it, let me know why you didn't like it. Subscribe if you like. Anyways, peace out guys and don't forget to tip your waitresses.